Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Remington Rand, makers of The Remington, the world's number one electric shaver, present What's My Line? <laughs> and now, let's meet the What's My Line panel, who tonight receives the Look Award for the best quiz or panel show of 1953. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, the brilliant young humorist who is the composer and also the singer of a new hit record called How Can Santa Come to Puerto Rico? Steve <laughs> Allen. <laughs> Thank you very much. And on my left, the lovely lady on Broadway, Miss Arlene Francis. <laughs> and on my left, a gentleman who has collected 500 of his best stories, and his best are pretty good, in a little bantam paperback book, and the stories are called Laughter Incorporated. Bennett Sir. <laughs> You're going to see a man who is completely surrounded by Look Magazine awards that he's won this week. One of them for our whole show, What's My Line, the other for being the best panel moderator. We now call him the man who came plaque, Mr. <laughs> John Charles Daly. Thank you. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We have some uh, visitors, some very nice people who've come and brought some interesting occupations with them. My friends on the panel are going to have some trouble. We certainly hope so, at least, and uh, we hope that our guests have a lot of fun and also carry home some prizes. We'll have a famous guest challenger before the experts a little bit later on, but let's get things underway now. It's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Barbara? Barbara Wright. Huh? What? You nervous? No. No? Not too bad. Good. There's a career ahead of you. Anybody can come in front of a television camera and isn't get nervous. Where are you from? Plymouth, Michigan. Plymouth, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't had anybody come see us from Michigan for a long time. Over there, four people from Manhattan. They look uh, rather formidable, but they're really nice people and they want to know you a bit better. So will you go over and see them? How are you? Hi. All right, Mrs. Wright, will you come over here now and sit down next to me? I think probably you know that uh, once the panel has had a chance to know you, no matter how briefly, we give them a free guess as to what your line may be, and we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a travel agent. A travel agent, Mr. Allen. I think she designs hats. Miss Francis. I think she grows Christmas trees. Mr. Sir. I think she's the one who inspired Irving Berlin to write that song, Gee, I Wish Again I Was Back in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Barbara Wright. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> the battle has to dig, Mrs. Wright, and uh, the rules are very simple. Every time you dredge up a no answer, We'll flip one of these cards, and ten of these flips, and you have won the game, and they have flipped, so to speak. We always give one last bit of help. Mrs. Wright is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Is there a product involved in what you do, Mrs. Wright? No. No, not exactly. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Do you uh, deal in a service of any kind? Yes. Do your clients or customers come to you? Yes. Do these clients or customers have anything in common at all? Yes. <laughs> Would I be an unusual choice? Yes. Uh, any chance would Dorothy or Arlene be a more likely choice? Uh, <laughs> Whatever it is, Arlene seems to enjoy it more. 
Now, let me see. Um, we've already established that there is no... No product. No product. Uh, you do then deal primarily with women. We've yes. gotten to that point. Is your work with them in any way uh, advisory? Yes. Uh, are they comparatively young women? No. Not necessarily. Actually, mm -hmm. I think in the context of the question... No. Mm -hmm. Song title. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Well, Mrs. Wright has a very childlike face. Do children come into your line of work at all? No. They don't... Small conference. <laughs> We uh, want to be very fair. Well, that's unusual. What do you want to say? <laughs> so we'll say yes. Uh-huh. Then, uh, are these women involved in some way with children or babies that come to you? Yes. Yes, they're involved in some way. Could they be mothers one t at one time if they come to you? Yes. Do they come to you uh, for advice about anything that has to do with motherhood? Yes. Uh, does it have anything to do uh, with the... <laughs> <laughs> no product, eh? <laughs> uh, it's an end product. How, with <laughs> uh, how to take care of themselves in any way. Yes. Uh, <coughs> You know that I'm going to have to pass because all that I can think of, I can't very well say. And that is much more articulate. Well, you are I'm passing? Thinking, well, <laughs> I'll take one more, one more chance. Do you have anything to do uh, with nursing? Yes. Oh. Uh, are you a nurse? Yes. Are you a baby nurse? No. No, that is actually, you're very close to the exact mm. thing. We'll give that a no. Three down and seven to go. Bennett. Well, are you... Somebody then who takes care of the children af just after they're born, maybe, when they're very young? No, before. Four just down before. and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. You were so warm. Well, uh, I, well, I think what Arlene meant, really, or what she was on the track of, I hope, was uh, those courses that are given for mothers-to-be. Yes. That's the one! <laughs> Yes, Arlene. I want to tell you that I, it's called a prenatal course, and I couldn't think of that word, and everything else I thought of wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Mrs. Wright teaches a course for expectant mothers. She is a nurse herself. And, and I work with, with women during delivery. Yes. Also. Well, now we have all the facts, and uh, we hope you had some fun. You have a small <laughs> prize, and we do want to thank you very much for being our guest from What's My Line. Nice to you. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Hermina. <coughs> Hermina Wirtz. <laughs> and is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Wirtz, where are you from? Bayfield, Wisconsin. Bayfield, Wisconsin. Well, I must say we're doing very well up in the upper Midwest season tonight, and, uh, Suppose you go and say hello to the panel, because they want to see you before you come and join me. Right. May I see that hand, Mrs. Wirtz? Nice and strong. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mrs. Wirtz, will you come over here, please, and join me, and uh, we'll let the panel have that one free guest that is their right, because they've had a chance to just meet you very briefly, and we begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. Would you come in? A bit I more? think she's a woodcutter. A woodcutter? Mr. Allen. I think she works on a dairy farm up there. Miss Francis. Yes, I was going to say, I think she's in the cheese business in Wisconsin. <laughs> Mr. Sir. Well, there's only other, one other thing. I think they make fountain pens there in Janesville. Bet you work for a fountain pen company. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Wirtz, and at the same time, we will tell them what her line is. <laughs> but, uh, Mrs. Wirtz, the panel's going to have to work. And uh, I dare trust you'll give them all a real rough time of it. We'll flip a card every time you give a no answer. And I'd like to lose all the feeling in this arm in the next couple of minutes. All right? Mrs. Wirtz is self-employed. Let's start the general questioning with uh, Mr. Allen. 
Is there a product connected with your work, Mrs. Wirtz? Yes. Is it, uh, to get right to the point, uh, smaller than a bread box? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, does it come in various sizes, then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it ever found in the home? Yes. Could I use it? Yes. Thanks. <laughs> uh, has it ever, or is it now, or will it ever be? <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> Alive? Yes. <laughs> Which one do you think? <laughs> Let's go back to, uh, well, let me say this. Is it now inanimate, or is it now not alive? <clears throat> is it now not alive? Right now. No. Is it now not alive? Just a moment, we'll have, I think we've got a little confusion about this question. Or could you kill it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead anyway, I can see that. <laughs> Is it now not alive? Yes. Yes. Go on. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a manufactured article in any way? A manufactured article. One down and nine to go. Miss Francis. Uh, I, just to clear this up, it is dead now, but it was once alive. Is that correct? This is a reasonable assumption, I believe, don't you? Yes. I see. Was this that was ever alive? Was it a, a small animal of some kind? No. Question? <coughs> we all were at one time or another, you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Twice. We don't want to confuse you. We just you want don't to want to be unfair again. Don't want to be unfair. We just want to befuddle you sometimes. Oh, sometimes we were an animal. Uh, sometimes it was an animal. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's Sunday, you know. Then do you perhaps deal in many different types of things? Yes. Uh, are these things that you deal in food, uh, are they edible? Yes. Do you have some kind of a place or a shop or a uh, restaurant where food would be sold or served? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Is your food primarily, Mrs. Wirtz, of the meat variety? Her food? The food that you deal in. I mean, would it be, uh, would, would, there, would some of these products that you deal in be, be known as meat? Meat liver products. Words. Would some of these products that you <laughs> deal in be known as meat? Marlene is obsessed upon getting in liver words. <laughs> there would be no meat products at all? Well, this is a very, actually, I think we'll give you a no on that, mostly because your premise is wrong. That makes it three dollars and seven to go, Mr. Gallant. Your <laughs> Could you give me a synopsis of Bennett's premise, please? <laughs> he assumed something that has not yet been tangibly set down as a viable premise for discussion. Uh, well, making, I'll just shall skip we it, say please. one very minor part of the discussion? He assumed that something existed or was in being that in fact is not in being, per se. Shocking. <laughs> Well, now, the product with which Mrs. Wirtz is involved, and not half as involved as we are, is found in the home. It has, has at one time or another been alive? Yes. And it is sometimes smaller than a bread box? Yes. And it's edible. And it's edible. But to it's not meat? To a degree, it is edible, yes. Uh, to a degree. There is well, an edible association. I see. But... <laughs> When it is found in the house, after she has done whatever it is that she does to it, <laughs> is it then not edible? After she has done what she does to it. <laughs> after Mrs. Wirtz has done what she does to it and you find it in the house, it would not then, in that state and condition, bearing in mind the basic and relative association that Mrs. Wirtz has with it be edible. Uh. I'm glad. <laughs> that would be a no, right? No, that would you? be a yes. I said, is it not edible? Oh, that's I was right. assuming yes. that it wasn't. Well, we tried. Uh, <laughs> is it still a useful product in the house? Yes. When it's in the house? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, is it something uh, that would be in view when company came to call? Yes. It might be, yes. Would in it be considered place. ornamental as well as useful? Yes. yes. Uh, would it be a, at any time furry or hairy? Yes. Uh, would it be um, some article that would make the home more attractive or someone in it more attractive? Make the home attractive or someone in it more attractive? No. Well, conference! <laughs> if that's it on her head. <laughs> we want to be very fair. So it's no. <clears throat> and we don't want to be fuddled. And Mrs. Wirtz has agreed that we'll give you a yes to that. Oh, all right. Uh, is this anything that would... Yes. At least you women hold it, though. <laughs> well, would it... That was going to be my next question. Now, if I had enough of it, would it keep me warm? <laughs> Yeah, if you had enough of it, it would keep you warm. Could it ever be, be made into a little jacket or a stole or a coat? Yes. Well, is it some type of fur rather than hair? Mm. No. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, do you do something to the fur or skin of animals? No. No, that's four down. Actually, I'm going to give you one more minute. Steve Allen, that's four down and six to go. Oh, dear. Then the, uh, we were sort of off the track when we were talking about uh, the edibility of this product. That's it? where you went astray, so to speak, yes. I think we spent nine minutes astray, as I recall. <laughs> then we're talking about an article of wearing apparel. Good night, everybody. <laughs> now, I think you're complicating. We have come to the point where it, we do understand that the product in question could become part of something that might be made into what might be considered wearing apparel. John, can we have a conference for a minute? Maybe we could wrap it up. All right, I'll give you 20 seconds for a conference. Maybe she's some kind of a... She you know, doesn't treat them afterwards. And yeah. then make little fur rugs. Well, she doesn't even make them. She sells them to somebody who does, maybe. maybe. She makes me feel trapped. Well, maybe she is in the pheasant business. All right, yeah. the 20 seconds are up. Steve Allen. Uh, good night. <laughs> <laughs> is she something like a trapper? Yes. <laughs> this is worth the fur trapper. Simple as that. This is worth. You gave them an awful rough time. I'm sorry, there's not enough prize here. Let's flip some more cards. Anybody who gives them that much trouble, we've got to flip some more cards. Thanks very much for being our guest. You try to be All right, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends in the panel are provided with blindfolds because they would recognize our guest and the blindfolds are all in place, panel. Uh -huh. yeah. Good, will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please. As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with all the usual preliminary questioning, get right down to the basic questions, which we will begin with Mr. Bennett, sir. <clears throat> well, we start with the usual gambit. Are uh, you uh, some way connected <laughs> with the entertainment business? I'm glad to ask me that question. Yes, I'm in the entertainment business. Uh... <laughs> uh, am I going too far in guessing that you're a male? I presume that would be in the right direction. Yes, I'll go along with that. <laughs> Talking to a fellow, uh, have you ever uh, been seen within the city limits of Hollywood, California? Yes, I have been in, in this place you mentioned, sir. Uh, for the purpose of uh, making a motion picture? A yes, that's image? true. I was making a motion picture. <laughs> have you ever uh, also appeared on... Uh, Radio and television? Uh, both of those mediums have been uh, associated with my career. I'm glad to tell you. <laughs> have you uh, been doing any uh, television work? Uh, quite recently. recently. Yes, quite recently. Would you say you had a regular show of some kind on television? Of some kind, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, 
I, I feel something penetrating here. Uh, that voice of yours uh, is not your usual voice that you use on television, is it? No. <laughs> Would you say that your ordinary voice was a, was a raspier sort of a voice? I'd like not to answer that. <laughs> Well, I'm probably a mile off, but I, I, I'm going to pursue this. Could be associated with? Not, not very legally, no. <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. More in the nature of a dramatic show. It isn't intended to be. <laughs> <laughs> Two down to eight to go, Mr. Allen. Have you, uh, have you ever seen a dream walking? <laughs> Are you a comedian, even loosely speaking? Uh, normally by the strangest construction of the term. I think in the term as we use it, we give you three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. What's left? <laughs> uh, do, do you do a news show? Well, I'm associated with a program which does have uh, an element uh, such as you described, Miss Francis. <laughs> you can't get that voice at all. Um, do you do a news show... Every day? Every, no, just five days a week, not every day. <laughs> well, <Monday. laughs> Monday through Saturday. Is it an evening news show? Oh, uh, no. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Surf. Have you ever appeared on this particular panel? As a member of the panel, you mean, sir? That's what I meant. No. <laughs> <laughs> You have something less than three minutes to go, and it's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. If you don't do an evening news show, but you do news, you do a morning news show. That's good sound thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Does it have any other elements besides the news that make it noteworthy? Uh, yes, uh, that, I think you're on the right track. <laughs> Uh, have you ever done any other kind of a program? Yes, uh, I, I have, uh, and I am now, even. Uh, <laughs> are you ever... Are you ever... ...is more generally considered entertainment than just straight news? Yes, I go along with that. Uh, uh -huh. Such things as singing and dancing yes. and uh, yes, okay. comedy bits. All those... And you occasionally perhaps get off a funny line yourself, even if it's rather uh, offbeat? Uh, faintly, yes, I was. Uh, do you wear glasses? Yes, ma'am. Uh, does one of your programs, the morning one, uh, take place at an hour that gets you up at rather an unearthly hour for most people? You have me It would be awful if I asked all those questions and got yeses and had the wrong person, but are you Dave Gow? <laughs> Subject. Another minute and Dave would have given up. This voice he was using was just about killing his throat. I don't think we knew he was, was such a dialectician. Good. No, I didn't know he was a dialectician. I, I didn't know you could produce that, that voice um, tone. I stole that from Uncle Fletcher in Vic and Sage. You remember? Yeah, Uncle? Like <laughs> well, it was a very happy yeah, steal, I must say. And thanks very much, Dave, for coming to see us and being our guest on Let's Fly Live. Thanks to Dave. So unhappily, time has flown again, and we have come to the end of one of our Sunday night programs. We hope you had good fun. Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, boys, and good night, Arlene. Good night, boys, and good night, Bennett. <laughs> we'll get that third contestant on sometime, won't we, John? <laughs> good night, John. Next, next week, I promise. And good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life. <laughs> Week, What's My Line will again be brought to you by Remington Rand. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Godman production in association with the CBS Television Network.